Hey garden friends, welcome on back. And today we are going to set up a new gardening trick, at least new for me. This is an ancient gardening trick, um, but for me, it's a new way to do it and I wanna share it with you. So come on along. Yes, new to me. I've read about it, I just not have tried it. And new to me watering tip. Let me finish one sentence before I start another. Um, yeah, these are Oya pots. This is terracotta Oya pots. Now this one is by Back to the Roots. I know there are others out there. Um, I bought these because I could get uh, three of them and they were gonna suit my purposes in the bespoke greenhouse. In the bespoke greenhouse, I do not have irrigation. So I have to set up a sprinkler or whatever, hand water, which is not efficient. And I wanted to do something that I could go away for a few days and not worry about the plants. So these are it. So this one is um, by Back to the Roots, self-watering terracotta Oya pot. So you just put it in the ground, fill it up, put the cork in it. So let's take a look at what it looks like. So this size will cover a foot and a half, I think is what it says. One, let me read it really quick so I'm saying this correctly. Set up in seconds, just bury and fill. 18 inch diameter covers to support two large plants. That's why I'm putting it between two tomato plants. Weatherproof rubber stopper prevents evaporation. Low fired clay pot creates a microporous surface that slowly releases water through osmosis as your plants need it. So that's also important for plants. Make sure my microphone's working. Half the time it's not. Um, that's important for plants, consistent watering and getting the amount they need, not too much and not too little. So this says 700 milliliter capacity, covers you during those long weekend getaways. So on here, let's see, just bury it and fill, reduces watering up to 70% compared to surface watering. Saving water is always a good deal. Coverage, one and a half feet diameter. <clears throat> Precision watering delivers the right amount of water to your plants as needed. Pronounced Oya. Okay. Refill when empty, and it has in parentheses seven days. So, this is an answer to something I needed done. Relatively inexpensive. These aren't cheap, but they will last you forever if you don't break them. So, yeah. And there, uh, I have seen some different company that were larger and they covered three feet. And that one was a little more of an investment for me. I wanted to try it first and see how it worked. And I think these ones are a great size for containers, like some of my big galvanized tubs. I think these would work beautifully as far as giving those plants consistent water. And I probably am going to buy more. I will put the link in the description box below to where I got these. They were on Amazon. So yeah. Let's go put these things in the ground. So it's inside here of my bespoke greenhouse where I don't have irrigation that I want to use these. And they're supposed to cover a foot and a half, which I may have mentioned already. But I'm going to go ahead and bring you up close so you can see inside. I kind of echo in there, so the sound's going to be a little wonky. But um, yeah, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use it in here for watering my tomatoes and cucumbers. Okay, I am going to plant, plant, you know what I mean, place this down here. I just wanted you to be able to see where it was going. Now there's weeds here, so I really should get those cleared out before I do this. There's a, you know those um, live lettuces you buy that have the rootstock on them? That's what that is, and it's struggled in here. I just put the sprinkler in here yesterday no, day before yesterday, and let it soak good. But this sand, this soil is so sandy and silty that it does not retain moisture. So I am just amazed at it. Now, we it was just fill dirt that we had put in here at one time, and I've just been trying to build it back up since. Um, yeah, there's some more weeds. I'm trying not to get in your way. Can you see right here? Yeah, so... It goes a foot and a half. So I think this will work right in between 
Maybe I should have got the bigger one where it went three feet, because that might be three feet. So I might need to go closer to this one. Oh, my goodness. That is a big old gopher hole tunnel underneath there. That gum, that, that rascal. Yeah, nothing but gophers around here. I have no safe place. Now they have not in the past ever eaten my tomatoes, but that doesn't mean they won't start. Um, yeah, look how dry that soil is already. And I had left that sprinkler going in here for a very long time. So being that it's at a foot and a half circumference, I, don't, I think that's more than a foot and a half. You know what, I'm just gonna give it a go and if I have to supplement, I will, and I'll be able to tell. But it's better than what if they are getting now. And I wanna bury it deep enough that it goes up to the neck. So I need to go a little bit further where only this part is sticking out to refill. Now this is supposed to save, hopefully my head's not been totally in the way the whole time. It's supposed to save, um, is that net, yeah, uh, like 70% water as opposed to surface watering. Uh oh, I got dirt in there, I didn't mean to do that. I guess I should have put this on so I don't get dirt. I'm gonna do that again because I don't want dirt in there. Sorry guys, just me muddling through as usual. My hens must have laid an egg. Let me see if that's gonna work. Yes, okay. I get ahead of myself. Alrighty, now I'm just gonna fill it back in around this. I will finish weeding. Now you normally, a lot of times I mulch real heavily with alfalfa straw, but um, we haven't been able to go get any, so I haven't done it this year. And that does help to build the soil, it brings in the worms, all of that fun stuff. So, okay, so we have that done. And then I will fill it up. I'll go get my hose and fill this baby up. I pulled my retractable hose. I'm gonna wet down the neck so I get any debris off of it. I'll make sure this is pulled out to where I can Use it, it usually locks in place. Good. And I'll remove the cork so I can put the water in it. And I have it on this, I fill it up, no. I'll fill this up. So it says that you need to refill them every seven days. Now is that filled? Yeah, that's filled. So there is number one, and I bought three. So I'm gonna put the next one, let me see if I can see in here, over here between these two. And I kind of squished that rose, uh, not rose, but tomato there a little bit as I was leaning down there. Now this, I think, is my beefsteak or my genuine. I didn't mark it and I do tend to forget when I have a bunch of things going, but look back here. There's a bunch of seedlings from the tomatoes that were in here last year. And I don't eat them, so up they come. This right here is a, this uh, here is a parsley. So this I need to tie up. It's kind of coming from the base. Though it does have blooms on it, I do, I should just cut that out so that it's not, I don't need that one, I've got others up here. But anyways, I'm gonna go back here. So. There is another tomato over here to my right. I grow my tomatoes, I'll show you if you haven't been around here when I set it up, but I grow my tomatoes up a trellis in here that is made from uh, concrete remesh. Now, deep down is rock, because this was just, like I said, a fill dirt area. And I will put the next one right in there. Got a root of something, oh, that's a root of that parsley, wow. It really gets deep. So I'll go get my other one and we'll put it in there. And this is the spot, I moved the camera so you can have a better angle. And now I'm gonna put the pot in this one. Let me see if I need to dig it out a little bit more. I may need to. I seem to have lost my gloves and all my finagling around. Okay, so let's put that down in there. Now I can't get that one quite as deep 
because I have rock down there. This area is very shallow as far as dirt. Oh, I forgot to put the cork in so I don't get dirt inside the pot. Move my hose and bury. Now I could mound up soil where it comes up to the neck and that's probably a very good option. I'm supposed to get a load of turkey compost, which I will put in here a nice thick layer around the tomatoes as a mulch and all of that. So there is my second Oya pot and now to fill it. I need to slow this down. So that's filled up and we put the cork back in it. Here you are, there's one tomato Oya pot in the ground and then this one down here, can you see that right there? That's the other one. So here's my tomatoes, let's lean you up. So here's my, it's a, such a small space in here, it's hard for me to get good footage. Let me see if I can do it with my phone. So here's another angle, you can see the two pots in there. You can see the two pots in there. One's there, one's over there. And then you can see the trellis that I'm training the tomatoes up. And they do just fine. I just weave them in and out. I have them, it hung from a hook so it's away from the walls of the green, little greenhouse. And I was gonna take the panels down, but when we were having those hot temperatures, um, these tomatoes did fantastic in here because it actually, the little bit of diffused light was better than the direct hot sun at that time. So that worked to our advantage. So back over there in that corner, that's where my cucumber is and that's where I'm going to put the third one. So I will go ahead and try to film that, cut this out if it doesn't work. I have to get by my camera, shimmy on by. Alrighty. There's a tomato right here that came up in the middle and I almost didn't have the heart to cut it out. I may just put a stake in and let it climb to the ceiling. Okay, something's been digging in here. I've got raccoons and skunks and all that. Hopefully nobody, none of them will get too curious about these pots in the ground. Now I do know this may be a little bit trickier over here because um, the soil is shallower and you hit rocks much sooner, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, I'm hitting rocks. I want to get all this oxalis out of here. I feed it to the chickens. All right. Let's see if we can get this deep enough. We're really hitting rocks now. Okay. I'll leave that in there so I don't get dirt inside. And we will bury it. I'll just bring up in enough turkey compost to bring up the soil line all the way to the to the top, close to the top. Okay, so there's my cucumber, which I need to set up the trellis for it. I have not gotten in here and done that yet, but that's very simple to do. So these are the Persian cucumbers and they stay smaller and tender, the skin stays tender, they never get bitter, and I've always loved them way more than any other cucumbers I have grown. Alrighty, so now I'll just fill up this one and we will call it good. And I will get in here later, put up the trellis, and I'll bring it back. That right there is a morning glory, not part of my cucumber. So yeah, morning glories, I've got several kinds around here that really reseed easily like the grandpa ought and whatever, but I love them and I just pull up the ones I don't want. And they're not invasive here, so it's good. All right, I'll fill it up. 
Let's see, I may need to pull my hose more. You've already seen me fill. You don't need to see me fill this one. So, well, the sun's coming out pretty heavy now. My camera's overheating and that wraps it up for today. I will bring you back when there's an update. I have an update on how these things are working, but I think they're gonna work great. And I probably, most likely, am gonna invest in more for other areas and containers. If it saves 70% water usage, it's a win for me. So I'll see you in my next video. And I don't know what I else. Oh, I have a uh, rose that I'm planting by the bigger greenhouse and I'll take you along for that.